Friends, welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and I have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of the Frankfurt, Mokina, and New Lenox areas. I ask that you come to this time with an open heart and an open mind. Ready yourself that we may truly come into the presence of God and leave transformed as people living in abundant life. Hear the affirmation in our prayer. Hope in the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage, hope in the Lord. Psalm 27, 14. You brought all things into being and know the secrets of the furthest galaxies as well as those within the hidden universe of the human heart. May we always hope in your faithful love which surrounds us all our days. Amen. Our theme this second week of Advent has been hope in God. Hope in God. And our final anthology reading again comes from the work weavings, this time from Luther E. Smith's The Work of Hope. Hope is a constant force working to enliven us, and its energy is immediate. Although we are neither its creator nor master, hope comes to us, dwells in our bodies. Our bodies are sacred creations of God, that are a home for hope. We embody hope. Jesus taught that our salvation, being in right relationship with God, depends on loving. Care for the body exemplifies his focus on love. He spoke of the hungry body being fed, the thirsty body being given drink, the strange body being welcomed, the naked body being clothed, the sick body receiving care, and the imprisoned body being visited. Body conditions are holy matters. To deny loving care to persons and their body conditions is to deny love to God. The body, as a recipient and giver of loving care, is of holy and ultimate significance to the work of hope. Wow. I really appreciate that. I I, I, I struggle, um, and maybe you do too, maybe you don't, with this uh, disconnection that we seem to have in the, in, in the modern world. I, I don't, I don't know if it's it's depending on I guess what you read it was in the ancient world too and and sometimes just for lack of understanding I think but we we talk about you know we we say I mean Jesus says love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your mind with all your strength and and, and when we talk about that we then disconnect it and Paul obviously was dealing with this because he said like listen we're not We're not these different entities. We're not, my mind is one thing, that's one me, and then my strength, my my physical body, that's another me, and then my heart, my emotional body, that's another me. He's like, we're one flesh. We are who we are. You can't separate the soul. You can't rip out the soul. That's why why most ancient Christians and ancient spiritualists and, and most people in our tradition forever don't believe that the soul is this separate thing that that floats away. Uh, I mean, even Martin Luther, we read earlier this week, believed that when you die, you kind of go into a sleep until the resurrection. Uh, We can talk about that some other time. I don't know. I haven't been there yet. We'll figure it out when it happens. I'm not worried about it. My hope is in something greater. Not concerned. But I have a hope for bodies for people because everyone who's out there right now was created good in the image of God everyone who's out there right now is beloved is chosen and the hope is that 
we'll all be in love one day. We'll all be in love one day. Do you understand what I mean? In God one day. We'll all be together. That's my hope. And and, and what, what the author is saying here and what Jesus was trying to say is living out that hope then means attending to each other's body. Or we might say as a church, the body, <laughs> the church. And that means you might have spiritual needs because you do, because you have a heart or, or spirit or soul, whatever you want to call it. And you have a mind and, and it drives me crazy that mental health is somehow this other thing that's not physical health. It drives me crazy that, you know, my teeth and my eyes aren't considered part of my medical care, but that's a different conversation for a different day. It's all me, my brain. And if something is happening in my brain, something emotional, that's not something over here. It's in me. That's it's physical. It's biological. And the spirit of God within me is part of who I am. I was created with it, the Bible says. I mean, if you want to just go on that basis. I wasn't imbued with something magical at a certain time in my life. I was knit together in my mother's womb. I was known before I was born or even conceived. So were you. And so let us hope in one another, love one another, cherish one another, and see each one of our human siblings as a vessel of hope and a vessel for transformation for a world that needs that hope. Our final scripture reading today comes from Romans 8, starting in verse 18. I believe that the present suffering is nothing compared to the coming glory that is going to be revealed to us. The whole creation waits breathless with anticipation for the revelation of God's sons and daughters. Creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice. It was the choice of the one who subjected it, but in the hope that creation itself will be set free from slavery to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of God's children. We know that the whole of creation is groaning together and suffering labor pains up until now. And it's not only creation. We ourselves who have the spirit as the first crop of the harvest also groan inside as we wait to be adopted and for our bodies to be set free. We were saved in hope. If we see what we hope for, that isn't hope. Who hopes for what they already see? But if we hope for what we don't see, We wait for it in patience. In the same way, the Spirit comes to help our weakness. We don't know what we should pray, but the Spirit himself pleads our case with unexpressed groans. The one who searches hearts and knows how the Spirit thinks because he pleads for the saints consistent with God's will. We know that God works all things together for the ones who love God. For those who are called according to his purpose. We know this because God knew them in advance and he decided in advance that they would be conformed to the image of his son. That way his son would be the first of many brothers and sisters. God works all things together for good. And our hope isn't what is now. It's not. The world's not perfect. I don't know what that looks like. I have hope that it will be good. I don't know what awaits me when I die. My hope is that that is the embrace of God. I mean, that's my conviction and insurance. I hope it will be good. My hope is in something much better than we know. My hope is that we can make a difference. My hope is that you and I can make a difference. That we together can make a difference. That we can offer hope to others who are starving for it or are desperate for it. 
And not to say to people, well, hey, this too shall pass. And it's true. Not to say God works, you know, mysterious ways or this was God's will or they're in a better place. All that kind of stuff that seems good, but might not really bring the hope we want it to be. But to sit together in uncomfortable silence, to sit together in suffering and pain, to sit together in times that are troubled and say this isn't what we're hoping for. To say there's something better than this. And I hope we can find it here. I know we will find it someday together in God's glory. On this final day of the week, we reflect on our offerings, how we can serve and give with our time, our talents, and our treasures, how we are called to be an offering in all things we do. Let us reflect in a moment how we may continue to grow in giving and adopt an attitude of gratitude. Friends, let us pray the Wesley Covenant Prayer. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.